Hello guys, haven't seen for ages and the main reason uh, why it happened is actually that uh, I got into a slight accident so the trace of which uh, still can be seen slightly on my face uh, but in general I'm okay so I'm ready to play uh, some games against you today uh, well we have uh, probably one hour and a half uh, before the sharks are preparing to uh, continue fighting uh, during the third day at St. Louis. So, let's see uh, who challenged me. As usual, I will try to play a few games uh, against the guys I've never played before. Uh, I do hope that everything is all right with the broadcast, I mean the sound, the picture. Just let me know um, if uh, something goes wrong. So, um, I was very careful in the sense of uh, settings today so uh, i do hope uh, at least the sound works fine um the question from uh, the drunken lawyer uh hi andre how did you like the tournament in riga unfortunately because of uh, this accident i actually had no chance to play in riga so i stayed at home and uh, didn't participate pity but well life is life uh here we go so um let's see let's see so this guy we have already played a lot this one as well so a lot of um a lot of uh, old friends and here is uh, vasily smyslov wow uh 26 30 rated premium user five minutes let's accept why not So, I'm playing with white pieces, and I will start with the e4. e5, knight of 3, and probably there will be the Smyslov variation, right? Because I'm playing against Vasily Smyslov. Let's try to avoid it. Uh, the question, can I play without being premium? No, unfortunately, it's not possible. So, to play, uh, you need the premium membership. That's for sure. And Karsten says, stream looks good. That's fine. Okay, so let's focus on the game. I haven't played uh, Bleeds for quite a while, to be honest, as well. So, I have to be careful, I have to be focused. So this is a famous line where uh, Black offers the sacrifice of the bishop. Of course, it's uh, not good for white to accept this sacrifice. Uh, the question, Andre, is this a weekly show? I haven't been on chess 24 for a while. Do you still do your banter bleeds Fridays? Uh, yes, I do uh, banter bleeds uh, usually on Fridays. Uh, this one is rescheduled because this coming Friday uh, it will be not possible for me to make this normal scheduled broadcast. Um, and to be honest, uh, there will be uh, some changes in the schedule for the nearest future because um, I have planned the trip to my homeland, to Ukraine. So I'm not sure if there will be a stable internet connection, I mean normal for uh, making broadcasts, so uh, I'm still not sure if uh, it will be possible for me to uh, broadcast from there. So most likely, most likely there will be no chance then our next uh, broadcast uh, will be um, somewhere around, I don't know, um, probably 7th of September or something like this, but we'll see. Uh, so just stay tuned and you won't miss the information. Another question, uh, will you play in another tournament then, Andre? So, also not sure. Uh, probably this Friday in Gutterslow. Um, and I actually uh, already registered there. Um, but I'm not sure because uh, 
My state of health is more or less fine, but uh, is it enough for playing a normal tournament? Mm, well, there are some questions at least. So, let's focus on the game. Uh, knight to h4, f3 is protected very well. There is a g-file, which I have a chance to play alone. So let's try to use this file for the rook. Because black actually uh, made this file a bit vulnerable uh, playing f5 and h5 at the same time. So is it wrong to put the rook on g5? I don't think so. It is a good blockading idea. So I stop black from playing g5. I prepare another rook to g1. And I also exert some pressure on e5 pawn. So this pawn is protected now. Uh, let's put another rook here. And what is next? It is probably possible to exert some additional pressure on e5 pawn. But if I play immediate knight c4, there might be something like uh, b5. Is it bad for me or I'm not sure. d4 is also an interesting idea. Uh, but I guess that with the knight on c4, it will be better. And at the moment, we can see that uh, the knight h4 is sort of out of play. So only four stops it from occupying f5. Um, it has no other square to occupy. On e5, I exert some pressure. So here I have a chance to sacrifice the exchange by taking on d6, then taking on g6 twice, and then grabbing also d6 pawn. Might be interesting, uh, but I'm not sure if this uh, compensation will be sufficient. So is there another way to exert pressure on black's position? So there is still this d4 idea. This might be interesting. So let's try d4, I don't know. That is just a direct attack. So I want to grab e5 pawn. And I think I have a chance to do this right now. So I take on d6. Now I take on e5. And I'm a pawn up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but d5 is a good reply. So my pawns remain doubled, remain a bit vulnerable. There is a question to take on d5 or not. Very interesting one. I think it's better to avoid taking on d5 because this opens up the c file. Another question is where to put the knight. I guess that d3 square might be an interesting spot because from there the knight will attack f4. A pawn that became vulnerable after I managed to grab the e5 pawn. Let's attack this pawn. And now, to take on g6 or not, it looks very tempting, so I'll do this. Moreover, I don't have a lot of time on my clock, so I have to come up with something forced, more or less. And now there is a question to play rook g7 or to play what? To play e6, maybe? Or to play just rook d6 or just to take on d5. I will start with taking on d5, now I'll take this pawn. Looks very delicious. And d5 is also hanging. So I want to play maybe rook d6, rook d5, something like this. Or I can try this move. Knight c5 also looks very good. Now, what to do now? So to protect b4 maybe. Or maybe just to play rook b7 first. Yeah, rook b7 looks much more promising. Now I'm going to protect this pawn, something like this, to activate the king. Maybe it was too much, but let's try. I have very active pieces here at, at least. I have some direct threats, so now I want to play rook h8. We need a lot of material. All right, at least I have a perpetual, but I think after knight b7 I win the material. So knight e6 now. Uh, okay, check. Have no time to calculate anything else. Should be winning, but the question is if I have the time to convert it.
<clears throat> and checkmate. Okay, not bad for the first game, right? Not bad for the first game. I do believe that this uh, exchange sacrifice was absolutely correct. And I think my opponent simply blundered uh, the fact that uh, the pawn e5 was under attack already. So b6 is kind of direct blunder. So instead of doing it, uh, it was necessary, I guess, just to take on d4 here. Uh, because if bishop takes on c5 instead, now I have an intermediate capture on e5 with check, and I think my position becomes simply overwhelming. Then I just take on c5, I have extra pawn, same sort of advantage with the uh, misplaced knight on h4, and so on. So it's not good for black. So I think here there was already the one chance uh, to save the material on the board just to take on d4. But after that, I think I just take on d4 with the bishop. Uh, we can notice that uh, my minor pieces are very active here in the center while this guy on h4 is misplaced. I have some uh, further plan of activity, um, of activation of my pieces, I mean, just to play e5 at some point. But I was still playable. I mean, maybe um, I would have continued again with the exchange sacrifice at some point, but this is much better than what black achieved after b6. So here I just have extra pawn. And okay, black has some chances, of course, but in general, my position becomes very good because look, my pieces are very well coordinated after this sacrifice. It doesn't even feel like a sacrifice because I have enormous quantity of pawns here and the great coordination of uh, the rook and the knight here, right? So um, I guess black made a mistake somewhere earlier. I'm not sure that this plan uh, with f5, h5 is so great. Um, at the very least, I would um, avoid playing f4. So after b4, my main idea was, of course, to prepare this bishop c5 to have this square in the response to f4. And I guess for black, it was much better to uh, keep the tension here. So there is still a chance to open up the f file, which is very helpful in the sense of activation the rooks and get into white's weaknesses. Because after f4, look, uh, my weaknesses on the f file, f2 and f3 pawns, uh, become simply not accessible for black. So now uh, it's kind of one side play. That's my idea here. Uh, anyways, uh, let's go further. Let's see uh, if there is another guy uh, whom I never played before. So there is Chizo, uh, but he challenged me with what? With three minutes. Um, well, I usually play with five minutes. Player number five we have already played, so let us see who's there. Uh, Zores from Denmark. Um, five minutes we have never played before, so I will accept this challenge. Here we go, I'm playing with black. I'm playing with black, let's see. I do hope that Gary will uh, kick this, uh, well, modern ashes, because uh, you know what? I'm a true fan of Kasparov, and I do want him to show the power. It's a bit pity uh, to see how he sometimes outplays these guys, but then just spoils everything. I know that probably it is underst understandable and quite natural because he had no practice for a long time and these guys are playing yeah almost each and every day still pity still pity that's what i mean i want a gary to kick all these guys to beat them to smash them probably today he will be luckier than yesterday and the day before yesterday. Okay, so what do we have here? E5. Um, I guess I can play knight g4 against this move. Uh, just attack an e5 pawn. Might be promising. Knight e7 is also absolutely okay. Uh, because after e6 I have queen e7 move and I'm fine. Um, I don't know what is better to play knight g4 or knight e7. Let's calculate. So if I play knight g4, how my opponent is going to protect e5. Sorry. Um, so queen e2 maybe. And then bishop c5 attacking f2. And if he castles, then queen h4. h3, and I achieve nothing. 
Yeah, so play B, yeah, I guess knight G4 is playable, but not that clear, so I will stick to knight E7. Castles. And now knight C5 looks natural. To prevent E6, to control E6 several times now, and also intending just to grab this great bishop. A light square at one, exerting annoying pressure in my position. So my opponent gives me such a possibility, but maybe I'm not forced to hurry up with this, so I will play bishop e7 first, developing the guy. And then at some point I will capture that bishop. So right now or after castling, that's the question. Let's castle first. Yeah, let's castle first. A3. All right. Let's play A5. I'm not sure what was the intention behind uh, playing A3 to play B4, not to play B4, but A5 is anyway a useful move. So now, I think it's time to grab the guy. And what, bishop a6? That was the second idea behind a5, not only to restrict the b2 pawn. Uh, let's take on f1. Bishop h6 was probably the way to at least <clears throat> save the exchange on the board. Now I think I can just play rook e8. Yeah, that is what I'm going to do. To have bishop f8 against bishop h6. There is also a possibility to play g6 if bishop goes to h6. Now it's not a problem because my rook is already on e8. So let's put another one on the b file. Probably was not necessary because there are some tricks with the e6 now. Threaten and bishop takes c7. But okay, after bishop c1, it's already the past. F4. Okay. Okay. So D4 is not a good idea here. That's for sure, because in this case, knight goes to E4 and then wants to jump to F6. So maybe I will play D4 a bit later when I will have a better control over position. Maybe just to play F5 here. I mean, if uh, white takes and passant, then I just take with the queen. I'm fine. If white doesn't take, then I control e4 square and I can play d4. Yeah, this looks interesting. I stop white's initiative on the king side with the help of this move. So white's main plan was probably to play just f5, f6, something like this, just to squeeze me, or at least to try to do that. Now it's not possible. So let us simply improve the position, move by move. <clears throat> b3. Okay, so bishop is ready to move somewhere. Okay, let's put our rook on d8, because I think my play will be more or less connected with the d4, d3, something like this. So the rook is no longer needed on the b file, moreover there is b3 pawn, so I can't really come up with a breakthrough there, so... <clears throat> now d5 is protected, so... I may consider something like c5 at some point. Okay, so maybe right now, let's do it. Let's grab the space. It's time. Yeah, this makes my bishop a bit passive, but I think grabbing the space is much more important here. Okay, I'm not going to take this because my queen is hitting on d7. Instead, I will approach white's pawns on the queen side with the help of a4. This will help me to make them weak. And hence, this will help me to create some new objects of attack. So let's take it. Let us occupy this important diagonal, exerting pressure on g2. Oh, 
Oh, okay. That was very good. Because simplification favors black, no questions. So now I want my rook on b3, another one probably on a4, attacking all weak pawns in white's camp. My king should be somewhere on e6 at some point. So let's go there. Let's go there and attack this weaknesses. Takes, takes. C4 can't be protected, by the way. Except for some tricks, maybe, like knight f1, preparing knight d2, but even this doesn't work because I take on c4, and after knight d2, I play rook c2. <clears throat> Pinning the knight and winning the game. Yeah, it's absolutely lost position. So let's have a look where white uh, made a mistake. Uh, so, of course, the blunder happened here after queen d3, so it was better, of course, to take with the pawn. Because after queen d3, bishop a6, as we can see, I just uh, make this skewer. Um, and um, after queen g3, bishop takes f1, uh, the only chance to uh, save the exchange on the board was to play bishop h6 in the resmans, creating a threat of a checkmate, uh, which forces me to play g6, in which case bishop takes f8, and here, uh, prior to taking the bishop, of course, I can take on g2, intermediate capture, uh, winning the pawn, and after queen g2 or king g2 doesn't really matter, I just take on f8. Still almost a winning position technically for black because black has extra material for no real compensation, white's pawns are weak. Uh, black has this dynamic uh, possibility of just pushing pawns in the center um, sooner or later. But still it was, uh, in my opinion, better chance for white than to uh, give me uh, the whole exchange, right? And a bit earlier, uh, I guess that bishop d3 in general is not very promising continuation here. So uh, it's a playable line, no questions, but uh, as we can see, black equalizes uh, quite easily. Um, so the only thing after d5, e5, and knight e7, I'm still not sure uh, what is going on after e6. So e6 was very interesting uh, try. The main point behind e6 is that if I take the pawn and after queen h5, I have problems, right? Because g6 leads to bishop takes g6, so I have to put my king on e7, ugly position. Maybe even this one is playable for black. I mean, I just play knight f6 then and gradually improve position of the king, but this definitely gives white some initiative. So I wanted to react uh, with the um, queen e7 in case e6 happens on the board. Um, and I guess that that is fine uh, for black because now the pawn is pinned. I want to capture it with the queen. I want to capture it uh, with the pawn. Um, as well, because now I have queen f7 in the response to queen h5, for example, if castles, I just take, uh, queen goes to h5 and I play queen f7 and I'm completely fine here. So bishop g6 I just take with the queen, so I just have an extra pawn and a good position. So maybe e6 was not that great. And if e6 is not that great, then black has no problems at all. Because after castling and knight c5, well, black feels uh, just all right. Because now if uh, you save the bishop on the board, move the bishop to e2 or something, I have better control over light squares. I have a chance to occupy f5 square with my bishop. So at very least position is just equal already. But when I get the chance to grab the bishop here, I think black is already slightly better. So cd3 helps white to save the material on the board. But look at this position. So I'm already fine with pair of bishops. I have this plan of c5 and maybe something like c4. I don't know. Uh, maybe just c5 then c6 just having this great control over central squares. I have the b file to exert pressure on this backward b2 pawn and I also have um, at some point a possibility to play f6 undermining e5 pawn. So I'm fine while white struggles to find an active play. That's what I mean. All right. Uh, anyways, let's go further. Uh, so who is here whom I never played before? Uh, let's see. Um, there are many challenges, by the way. So we started with only five or something. Um, a rare entry gentleman. Five minutes. I've never played before premium user, except. Here we go. So it is the last game after which we get to the normal order of challenges, just as usual uh, when it comes to Bunter Blitz with me. So d4 takes, so Sicilian, right? 
Great. And I expect knight f6. Yeah, what else? And now there is a question. Dragon, a6 move, knight c6. There are a lot of different possibilities. So let's stick to bishop e2 line. And e6, Scheveningen, Scheveningen, call it like you want. But that is exactly what Gary played against Karpov with black mainly. So bishop e7, let's play f4. Now it is always an interesting question, right? To prevent b5 or to wait a bit. So here I think when the diagonal is not protected that well, uh, it's still not a big threat. So I will start with the bishop e3 move. <clears throat> I mean, if black plays b5, there might be something really annoying connected with the e5, something like this. So after knight c6, there is a threat of taking on d4 and then playing b5. So I'll play a4, just restricting black's pawn a bit. So bishop d7, intending to take on d4 and then to play bishop c6, typical idea, which is usually met by an ib3 move. Just going back, but preventing this operation. And also preparing a4, a5. Rook c8. Okay. So now I guess I have the time for king h1. Let's say king h1. Let's say knight goes to a5. I play e5. Knight b3, ef6, knight a1, takes e7, takes e7, takes a1. I have two minor pieces against the rook, that's okay. Um, e after knight a5, e5, uh, d takes e5, then I take on e5. If knight goes away, I take on a5 and take on d7, winning the piece. If um, after e5, knight immediately goes to e8, I can take on a5 and I have some time to improve my position. But I'm not sure what is better, to play king h1 or bishop f3. I think in this case, bishop f3 is a bit better. So let's put the bishop here. It's just a normal square for the bishop, protecting e4, controlling long diagonal h1, a8. And uh, whenever I play e5, this bishop will be just very helpful in this diagonal. And I'm not sure that rook c8 was the best move here. So typically black plays something like queen c7 or maybe b6, and then rook goes usually to b8, and after knight a5 there is a possibility of exchanging knight on a5, and the rook starts working along the b-file. That is usually the main idea. All right, so now it starts looking very strange to me. But maybe I just have no proper experience in these positions. So let's see. e5, what is the idea? Just to take on f4 and to put the knight on e5. That is a typical thing. Can I play just f5 here? That's an interesting question. Then just to be aggressive as possible on the king side, with the g4, g5, and so on. Could be a plan. It can be also possible just to play a5 here to prepare bishop b6, but then e takes f4. Uh, bishop takes f4, and I guess to e5, it is typically very safe for black. Knight to d5 is another candidate move here. But then after knight takes d5, e5, knight b4, well, no, knight b4 is just c3. After knight e5, e5, e takes f4, takes on c6, also good. So probably after knight e5, black will capture an f4 immediately. In which case, I will have a chance to grab the bishop on e7. This might be interesting. So let's try knight e5. Not sure that it is the best 
decision here, but well. Let us experiment. Moreover, just blitz, right? There is no time to think a lot. Moreover, in my situation, so I'm not at my best shape. So it's better for me to stick to quick play and just natural decisions, something like this. So most likely black will capture with the queen. I will recapture with the bishop on f4. And I will have a pair of bishops, but this blockading knight on e5 might be very, very annoying. But we'll see. We will see how it works. I'm not sure what my opponent is thinking of here because queen e7 looks like the only move. Yeah. Probably he was calculating knight xc4, but it was better just to make the move on the board and to analyze this position already. And by the way, knight e4 might be absolutely playable. But after rook e1, there are some problems with the knight e4 and pawn on d6, so it's better, yeah, to play this way. And now, what I wanted to do now is actually to play this move. I wanted to try to exploit the absence of the dark squared bishop. So to try to activate mine. Let's see. So I just pinned the knight. I want to go away with the bishop f3 and to create a real threat. I also have in mind something connected with the knight e4, knight f5 maneuver, especially if black plays g5, something like this. But maybe I missed something. So now there is a chance to grab the material. Hmm. Yeah. I underestimated this capture in a connection with further plays. So let's play queen f3. So rook f3 was interesting, but g5, I wasn't sure what is there. And now black can simply take on e4, yes. Very nice. But okay, at very least, I have some compensation, right? So now all these pawns are extremely ugly. First, I have to solve the problem with my c2 pawn. How to do this better? Just to play c3? Yeah, let's play c3. Natural move. Very solid one. And I guess I will get this f6 sooner or later. There is also d6, which looks very, very hard to protect. So let's attack it. Let's activate the knight. Fixing the pawn b7. Now, let's activate the king. All right, bishop is very bad now. And no, I can't take on f5, so because of rook f4 check. So g3 first. Okay, with pleasure. Now I take here. I take here as well. Come back. Yeah. All right. So the end game was probably equal after this exchange on f6, to be honest, if black uh, would have played correctly. So queen takes f3, rook f3, g takes f3, c3. Mm, I guess it was necessary to activate the pieces as soon as possible. I'm not sure uh, what is the best way, though, 
Uh, but I guess something should be uh, more or less connected with the initiative along the G file somehow, because there is a possibility to put the bishop on C6 at some point and to put the bishop on the G file. So maybe <clears throat> it was possible to do something like this. So rook c4, first attack in this pawn. Uh, now let's say a5, the move I made uh, a bit later against rook c4. Now rook jumps to g4 with the idea of bishop c6. Maybe it is still not enough. I mean, I take on f6, bishop goes to c6. I play something like g3 simply. But there is something after h5. I think even if white has uh, some chances to win this, it will be extremely hard to do this. Uh, by the way, it is possible to start with the rook g6 move. Also very solid one, just protecting everything along the 6th rank here. If I take on g6, pawns uh, are being improved. Uh, if not, then, well, this initiative with the h5, h4 can be exactly what black needs here in this position. Because if you stay passive in such a situation when you have so many weaknesses, when pawns are so bad, then the fact that white doesn't regain the material immediately uh, doesn't mean anything um, and uh, doesn't change the evaluation of the position. Because long term, white should be better in such a situation, I think. Uh, because the pawn structure is much better. That's the problem uh, for the bishop in such a situation. Because bishop has no real objects of attack while the knight is very maneuverable. Now there are a lot of different strong points to occupy a lot of targets for the knight when there are so many uh, weakened pawns and so on. So only activity, uh, a quick activity, maybe sacrificing some additional material uh, could have saved uh, black in this endgame. That's my opinion. Um, and um, I'm not sure that rook c8, I said that uh, during the game, I'm not sure that rook c8 is the best move here. So I think something natural like queen c7 or maybe b6, followed by queen c7, rook c8, b8, not c8, followed by knight a5, so the typical uh, play, something like this. So b6, let's say bishop f3, queen c7, uh, g4, like, I don't know, rook b8 here or something like this, or maybe bishop c8. Maybe just to start with the queen c7, I don't know, really. So I'm not a big expert in positions of this kind, but uh, the plan that was showed by Kasparov uh, against Karpov, I think, uh, could have worked just well. Okay, um, let's go further. So I promise that uh, now we uh, get back to the... Um, normal order of challenges and the first challenge today was left by smocks so let's play smocks accept here we go so black pieces f4 all right so let's play something normal against f4 so last time I saw f4, I played the shit e5, but that's not correct. Of course, just a normal central strategy can help black here. So d5 followed by knight f6, e3. Okay, so that will be something like Dutch defense reversed. Okay, so how to play against Dutch? There are some gambit lines like e5, I think, can be considered. But the normal way of developing the piece is just to play c5, knight c6, and so on. h3. Something very strange, honestly. So my opponent tries to provoke me. But okay. I have to be careful. I'm not sure why it was played, I mean this h3 move, to prepare g4, maybe. Let's keep developing the pieces though, simply like this. So keep it simple, right? Now I want to play e5 at some point. So let's prepare e5, queen c7. So I can't believe that this h3, g3 was a good idea. In my opinion, it was much better, well, to play g3 without h3, to avoid this extra weakening of the position, first of all. Maybe it was even better just to play bishop e2 castles. So quick development, then something like knight e2, e4. 
because it feels like uh, white simply gave me a lot of time here to prepare e5 comfortably and I think that there is no problem with playing e5 just right now. Knight b5 all right just queen e7 is possible queen b8 is also absolutely playable I don't know which square is better so let's just keep playing normal moves queen e7 looks okay there is nothing wrong with that. Takes, 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 takes. What can we see? G3 is weak. G3 is already under pressure. E3 is also a backward pawn, also quite vulnerable. So back should be just better in this position. Maybe even much better already. This position looks very good. But still not easy to prove it. How to do this? So to start with a6 looks natural, but white has sort of counterattack with the d4. So maybe it's much better for me just to play bishop d7 with the same idea to attack the knight. Then maybe I will have a chance to put this bishop on c6 even. Yeah, let's keep developing the pieces. I can't see. I can't see how could it be wrong to play this way. Let's put the bishop on c6, right? Yeah, why not? Very good square. And that is just a blunder, right? So we can take it with a temple. Well, Smox plays not his best game today, that's for sure. Let's take on d3. So I have two extra pawns already and I have a feeling that I can simply take on e4 with the queen now, increasing my material advantage. Again, I can't see anything wrong with this, so let's just take on e4. Yeah, it's lost. It's simply lost for white. I still have to win this though. Let's protect it. I mean, why not? So it was handy and I just placed c4 protecting it. Also avoiding bishop d6 taking the pawn on c5. So. Multi-purpose move. And let us simplify. Let us simplify the position. Knight c7 is a threat. How to avoid it the active way? I guess knight e4 should be should be played here. Now what? There are so many promising moves. Let's put the rook on the d file. Knight c7 and let's say rook to e7. Too many extra pawns. I can see one more here on b2. Feels like the time to resign, I guess. But Schmucks usually plays till the end. Uh, 
Okay, check. Takes. So too many blunders, my friend, too many. Yeah. So I don't believe that this opening choice was healthy. I don't understand H3. Okay, I can understand and explain all previous moves because as I said before, it's kind of Dutch reverse. So it's playable, uh, but uh, after making three pawn moves in the opening, it's time to make a move with a piece. Otherwise, you just give your opponent a great advantage. So here, knight f3, let's say knight c6, bishop e2, that was the way to play it. Then castles and uh, as quick as possible to prepare e4, or maybe to play b3, bishop b2, controlling e5 additionally. So main idea for black here in this position is to play e7, e5. If black manages to do this without consequences, then black is better uh, because of this backward e3 pawn. So this is a bad pawn, a weakness, right? So you don't want black to play e5. Moreover, the whole setup is designed uh, to uh, control e5 square, maybe to occupy this e5 square later on. So you have to do everything to control this square additionally because black definitely play uh, fights for this e5, right? Black plays all the moves dedicated to playing e7, e5 at some point. You have to do the same. And uh, at the same time, you have to combine it with the development, normal development, like bishop e2 and castles. At some point, it can be even transposed into, uh, let's say, some of lines of um, Queen's Indian defense reversed. So um, that is actually the complex, right? So the Dutch, the Queen's Indian defense, everything is dedicated to controlling central squares with pieces mainly, sometimes with uh, also the pawns, but avoiding occupying the center with pawns heavily. Uh, it doesn't actually mean that you have to avoid uh, controlling the center at all. So what you did here, you actually spend the time on uh, moves on the side that were not necessary at all. And uh, as a result, we can see black simply occupy the center. So after queen c7, you no longer have a chance to prevent me from playing uh, e5 unless you play something like d4. But this is another story. So it is kind of stonewall, but again, with a strange pieces placement and with a lot of extra time if compared to the stonewall, to the normal stonewall for black. By the way, d4 was possible here. and. If I would have a choice, uh, I would probably uh, choose exactly this d4. Because, well, yeah, you weaken your position a lot, you weaken e4, but at least you have this stonewall plan of playing g4, c3, and it's kind of a solid thing. So yeah, you give up e4 square, but it's very hard for black to get to uh, white's weaknesses here. After knight c3, giving me a chance to play e5, well, I get to your weaknesses and I'm just much better here. That's the question. Uh, to play d4 or not to play d4. Probably it was uh, worth doing it. All right. Uh, butterfly is the next, except we haven't played for a long, long time, I think. Yeah, I have a feeling. And there will be something like a gambit. Oops. All right. So knight c3, right? As far as I remember, that is your uh, favorite choice. And e4, yep, that is true, that is true. Okay, let's play this way. And let me remember how to play this. So bishop goes to f5, as far as I remember. Now the pawn goes to e6, it's kind of karakon. I goes to g5 and there is a direct threat of just taking on f7 then taking on f5. So bishop g6 looks like a move here. Uh, but then there is a sacrifice on e6 at some point. Yeah. It is always not easy to play this without a good preparation. And I'm too lazy actually to come up with a proper line against this gambit. Well, what else can I do? Queen a5 is kind of move protecting bishop, but this looks awful to me. Maybe bishop g4 is kind of move here at tempo one. Bishop remains here protecting e6. 
and uh, then I can try h6 move or something. So let's try bishop g4, but I can't believe it is the best move um, because if knight f7 is also possible after that. And the things become really tricky. So knight f7, king f7, queen g4. That is a problem with the bishop g4 move. But after knight f7 at the same time, I have kind of queen c7 move. And the queen is still under attack and I want to take on f7. Is that a possibility for black? I'm not sure at all. Not sure. Whew. Yeah, that's kind of tricky. So bishop g4, knight f7, queen c7. Queen is hanging. Yeah, I think it's playable for black, so let's try it. My point is that I do want to prevent this sacrifices on e6. So if I play bishop g6, which at first glance looks very solid, it usually leads to some annoying threats like bishop e6, then followed by knight e6, where it goes to e1, and there is just a direct attack against my king. So my king all of a sudden finds himself under fire. Don't like the type of positions. Simply, that's why I try to do some things to prevent it. So they are tricky because knight f7 looks very promising now. And I do hope I'm not mistaken evaluating this because knight f7, I can't play king takes f7. All right, bishop e2 is kind of relief. So I take on e2. And now I can play h6 prior to doing anything, right? Yeah, just getting rid of this knight, and now we have just a Karakhan. Just a normal Karakhan. With the extra pawn for black. Let's play it. Queenie one. All right, knight e7. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, I've avoided the attack. Maybe it was the main line, I'm not sure. Okay. Usually in Karakhan, Queen goes to c7, though. But I guess it's also playable. It's also all right for black. Like managed to prevent the most dangerous threats, I guess. So now it's fine. Now I can think of something typical for Karakhan to undermine d4 pawn with the c5. I think long term should be just the best plan for black. Bishop here. All right. Let's just do this. Slightly forcing white to take it on d6, improving position of my queen, controlling g3 square. So I wanted to prevent queen g3, something like this. Now I think I'm fine with castling both sides. I don't know what is better for me. Let's castle short. Can't be that bad. Okay, so now c5, yep, time to undermine this central pawn. Yeah, after exchange of light script bishops, I actually felt this shift. 
and it's a great shift towards something positive for black because actually no fear after that no fear whatsoever okay let's keep it simple now just occupying the c file which became open uh, to simplify this we're not it might be tricky because of uh, white's control over c file that might be actually the simplest way to convert this position to know what to choose well let's put the queen here we'll simplify a bit later after all i want to control the c file that's my idea let's take it another work to c8 Queen C8, 96. Okay, where to put the queen? Let's try this square. Yeah. Now, now what to do now? There are some possibilities. Let's play the first active move in this game. Trying to clarify the things with the knight, where it goes. Okay. Now what to attack in this position? It's a good question. There are some objects of attack. Have to be faster though. Have to be faster. Queen b5 was better than queen a4. It's 100%. So yeah, the way I convert it doesn't look good. But I'm getting closer. Move up to move. All right, let's take this without much thinking, because I think I control everything in a position. Now there is a threat of queen g2 checkmate and I can't see a normal defense. Yeah. All right, uh, so an interesting game uh, and uh, the most interesting moment was here when I decided to play bishop g4 so why didn't I play bishop g6 at first glance it looks like the most natural move and uh, well as far as I remember in one of our games against butterfly uh, there was a problem with this sacrifice on e6 maybe it's not completely correct but when you play blitz and you don't know what to do there uh, there is a great risk to lose the game so it feels like this typical uh, sacrifice in Karakhan opening up the position of the king, then get into e-file with heavy pieces, having very simple development, while black struggles to find um, a good square uh, to hide. So that's why I decided to um, play this bishop g4. My idea was that if queen goes away somewhere, and to be honest, I expected the queen moves something like queen d3 or queen d2, don't know which one, um, I had the time simply to play h6, just kicking the knight away and then getting back with the bishop to this diagonal if it is necessary. But the idea was to get rid of this um, extremely dangerous attacking knight g5, um, avoiding these sacrifices on e6. Uh, the most interesting continuation here was knight takes f7. Um, well, I don't say that it was good, probably it was just a losing move, but uh, the one that uh, made me nervous a bit because if I simply take on f7 then queen takes g4 and uh, white has the position which is very close to a winning one um, but here I have some chances so I can take on d1 in which case I think after knight takes d8 uh, white gets what he wants so if I take on d8 white takes on d1 white has pair of bishops and white managed to grab uh, the pawn f7 so that is not a move what I wanted to play here is to put the queen on c7 and now we can see that the queen on d1 is still under attack and the knight f7 is attacked twice so now uh, if uh, anything I can just take on f7 with a queen 
uh, that was actually uh, my main idea and probably this works because uh, I can't see the refutation of this uh, approach so queen is really hanging I want to take on f7 with the queen uh, if bishop e2 I just take on e2 again attacking the queen and then I finally take the knight so probably knight f7 was not correct and if not uh, then I would probably stay with the idea of just get, going away with the queen here so maybe queen d2 maybe queen d3 looks ugly but uh, still saving this bishop c4 on the board so this bishop is kind of key piece here after exchanging uh, light squared bishops um, I think white has no real chances for any sort of attack again here I would uh, have captured with the queen not with a knight this uh, drops another pawn but at least if black accepts this second sacrifice there is a uh, way to develop the pieces quickly and to exert pressure, still exert pressure on black's position. This looks quite dangerous for black, even though he has two extra pawns here. Uh, after knight e2, I was completely uh, safe, so I just played h6, forcing the knight to f3, and now what do we have? We have a typical Karakhanian position uh, with uh, only a slight advantage uh, in development for white, which is good, uh, because it is white after all, um, and uh, well, no big threats no big threats here so i control the board and the rest was just a conversion of the advantage that's the point so next challenger arthur navrovsky accept what happened to your rating my friend what's wrong so only uh 1277 pt to see this because you play much better than this rating shows my goodness all right we all have bad days, we all have bad periods of time. So for example, my rating 2869 is also far away from my best. So I had 30 hundreds plus, but then at some point just spoiled everything. So still can't get back to my best rating here. And everywhere, not only uh, on chest 24, the same as about other plane zones but okay so bishop f4 not a typical development for the bishop but just a normal plane move it's kind of mix of different openings now oh, rook b1 that was probably a misclick most likely it was a misclick so just castle so rook c1 was planned i do believe maybe i'm wrong though so now <clears throat> how to play against this mix so just to play knight e4 to take on c3 followed by c5 looks natural and i will try this plan Do not understand this, to be honest. I can take on c3 both ways. I mean, I can take on c3 with the knight and to win a pawn this way. I can take on c3 with the bishop and, um, yeah, to get the exchange. So bishop c3 takes, takes with the knight. Bishop takes h7, check was probably planned. Uh, and if king h7 then check and takes my knight on c3. But in this case, I have bishop e4 followed by bishop b1. Yeah, so I'll just... Oh, maybe there is a trick. I mean, bishop c3, takes c3, knight takes c3, bishop h7, king h7, knight, knight g5. Huh? Can it be a winning move with this typical attack? Oh, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Okay, I don't want to calculate this even. Now I can take on c3 without much problems. So yeah, bishop takes c3 simply. I think I just win the pawn and the exchange. It's too much. It's too much, my friend. Now I just damage the pawn structure this way and keep developing my pieces this way. Yeah, game over. Game over. d5 
Okay, let's go to the edge of the board. Because I have the root, I mean, knight b7, knight c5. After d5, this square became very tempting to occupy. Yeah, position looks very sad. For white, still have to win it. So let's maneuver the knight first. What is that? Come on. I can just take the bishop. There is no problem with that. I mean, let's grab it. Yeah, one blunder after another. Artur, I'm so sorry. But you have to do something with your tactical vision. Because look, there are so many defenses against this checkmate on g7. <laughs> I just know that you can better because we played several games already. And I'm really sorry to say this. But it's definitely not your best level. Definitely not. So probably you need a break. Just like me. To recover completely and to get back with a new power, with a new desire to play well, desire to improve, and so on. So, <clears throat> there is nothing to command even, so too many blunders, too many, just each and every move was blundering something. The question, um, you ever play table tennis? Yes, I love playing table tennis, to be honest. And uh, uh, when I was an active player, I mean, when I was younger, um, I used to play quite a lot because uh, almost everywhere in Ukraine, especially uh, when it is summer and uh, yeah, you play a chess tournament, there is usually a table for ping pong. So uh, almost all chess players are quite good uh, at um, playing ping pong as well. So yeah. <clears throat> but uh, nowadays I think I lost all my skills. At the very least, I have to spend a lot of time to remember how it is. Let's go further. So, who is next? Uh, Silan from United Kingdom. And by the way, the guy I've never played before. So, accept. Here we go. I'm playing with black again. And d4. So let's see. Nimzo and f3. So I wanted to test this tricky line against it. Knight to c6 move. And d5. So the point is that I start exerting some pressure on d4 pawn here. Yeah, it looks a bit unusual. And usually it leads to slight advantage for white, right from the start. Still interesting line. Now the knight goes back to g8, all of a sudden. Just to occupy much more uh, flexible position on e7. For instance, after bishop b5 move. Yeah, I can play knight e7. Yes, I will play knight e7. Now everything is connected with the control over light squares. That is what matters here. 
That is what matters here in this position. So how to do this? H5 looks very interesting now. Uh, bishop f5 is too early because of knight g3. Knight f5 can be an interesting try here though. Yeah, but after knight f5 there is bishop c6 possibility. No, no, h5 looks also quite well. But this weakens g5 a lot. On the other hand, it grabs f5 square for me. Don't even know how to play this crap. Yeah, it's definitely crap. So b5, bishop b3 or bishop c2 even looks just fine. Okay, let's try h5. So Arthur says on Sunday I'm starting a tournament and I'm not prepared. Well, everything that you need actually, just a good state of mind. Forget about blundering a lot. Uh, just try to forget about it because if you will think about it a lot, you will blunder a lot as well. So yeah, and try to solve tactics just today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, and so on, just to improve your current shape. I think, yeah, this will be the best you can do in this short period of time before the tournament. Okay, H4. So now I do want to occupy F5 square. First, let's play b5. This spin along the a4, e8 diagonal is kind of annoying. Position now starts looking very strange. So if black fails to coordinate the pieces well, of course, black will be much worse. So black made a lot of weaknesses here. That's what I mean. Now it's important to exchange light squared bishops at least at least to try to do this. Otherwise, this bishop c2 will decide the decide the game simply sooner or later. Bishop g5, uh, pinning the knight e7, right? So. Against that, I wanted to play queen to d7. Just getting rid of the p. Oh, that's an interesting comment. Why my rating is uh, 1489. Uh, it is my rating for slow games because, uh, yeah. I just played only one slow game and I didn't intend to play that game. So I just resigned. Uh, and lost some rating points. Yeah. And I've never played slow games after that on Chess24. That's why. It is so low, if that is what you mean. Okay, now what? Uh, there is an interest in maneuver bishop a5, bishop b6, intending to exert pressure on d4. And I think it makes sense. Because bishop doesn't really make anything useful on b4. Okay, bishop b6. And now I just did what? I created the first threat in this game. To take on e5 or to take on d4 after exchange on c2. That's good. It's always very cool actually to make the first threat when you play with black. And now I can grab the pawn, right? It feels very, very natural to do this way. Bishop c2 first, now knight e4. Great. Check. And now. I 
I don't know, but knight f5 looks very tempting. Just very, very tempting. Let's play this. Creating a sort of knight g3, at some point knight to e3, and so on. A lot of different threats. And by the way, it was the square I wanted to occupy. So Let's do it. Yeah, the opening was kind of dubious. Now I feel fine. The last task is to castle. Of course, to castle is short because castling alone is not possible, first of all. It's complicated. Moreover, it's kind of suicide, I think, in such a situation. So now what? Now I think, well, e6 is a threat. Now I think it's time to castle simply. I have only one minute to convert it, so I have to be much faster than I was before. So let's keep it simple. Let's take this. Wasn't necessary, but I just want to make a series of simple moves to improve the position. Maybe it's not even an improvement, but well, at least it looks very solid. To prevent White's most dangerous threats potentially. What happened? F4? Doesn't feel like a good idea. But g6 was awful. Man. Why did I play this? I have no idea. My goodness. What am I doing? Yeah, just the worst conversion ever, I would say. Thank you. I won on time, but well, you saw this. That was just a disastrous game, disastrous conversion. It was just absolutely crappy after I won the pawn. So I played a dubious opening. Uh, I'm not sure how to react to this opening correctly, but I do believe that h4 was something that uh, white uh, didn't need to play. So h4 just creates additional weaknesses in white's position and uh, doesn't add to the advantage. I think the healthiest approach, just to castle as soon as possible, and then to try to play this aggressive f4, f5, that is the plan. Uh, there is also a possibility to force me to exchange the bishop at the good moment. For example, here, after h5, a3 looked very good. So you just play a3. If my bishop goes to a5, you play b4. Um, and my bishop on b6 looks quite passive when I didn't play b5 so this there is still a pawn uh, I mean uh, on b7 so this, there is still a bishop on this diagonal pin in my knight and so on that was not very good uh, for me 
uh, yeah, so a3, I would say, uh, the best move here. But then later, when I already started uh, occupying this important square, so I was more or less fine. So this a3 was not necessary here. Again, I would uh, prefer something, uh, protecting d4 pawn, maybe playing bishop to e3. Um, if there is a problem with the d4 pawn, I would uh, probably uh, not even occupy uh, this g5 square because it forces my queen to d7, the square that I anyway wanted to occupy, right? So it improves my position. So something like this, uh, there were some better possibilities, I mean, for white, much better ones. But here, after actually grabbing the pawn, I started playing like a moron. So uh, several moves were okay. But here, after rook d1, I mean, maybe c6 immediately was a move. Uh, why did I take on this c3 square? I have no idea, to be honest, because there was no threats, right? So I could have played c6 here if I wanted, just protecting d5 and preparing going away with the bishop. Bishop was very important here. I was like a reflex, so I wanted to um, actually uh, play simple moves to simplify a position, but it left me, um, yeah, against this bishop. Bishop was potentially quite good. So I made several mistakes. So here, for example, g6 was just awful. Uh, amazingly how I chose this move. I don't, I, I have no idea how it happened. And there was a normal plan of uh, like playing queen to e6 instead, then maybe d4, then rook c7, rook d7, rook d5. So just slightly improving position, something like this. It was hard, of course, because of my bad pawn structure, but still quite promising, I mean, long term, because at the moment we can see that the bishop is misplaced. Maybe it was even possible just to play rook e6 here intending to play f6, the idea I completely missed. Yeah, maybe that was the best move for me. That's true. There was also a possibility, just imagine, to play knight g3 check and then knight e4, even this was better than playing this shit g6. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, so here, what do we have actually? Uh, Chess 24 stock a bit. Um, so, can I accept other challenges? Yes, I think I can. So, Duke Crusher is the next. Let's try to accept it. No, I can't accept the challenge because this game is actually, um, it is not finished. I mean, it's kind of only one part that was finished. I'll try to update, update the page. Oops, that's bad. That's very bad. My goodness, no. Oh, please, no. Yeah, I think we have some problems. Some problems on the side of the server. But let's hope it will be fixed. Will be fixed soon. We still have some time, right? before the broadcast from San Luis starts. So I think if the problem with the server will be solved in several minutes, then I will have a chance to play one or two games. Hmm. No, 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 no. No, oh my goodness, will be bad. No way. So even refreshing the page doesn't help. All right, let's wait a bit. So what do you think, guys? How it will be played today in San Luis? I do hope that Gary will just bit at least somebody.
course, I do hope that uh, he'll win all his three games. Well, it's probably not realistic. But who knows? Who knows? He one of the best chess players ever. Maybe the best one. Mm. Doesn't work. There is a suggestion. There is a suggestion. Try to back. Same. Same thing. Same thing. Wow. That was unexpected, to be honest. Unexpected. What happened? Too many players came. Or what? My goodness. <laughs> there is a suggestion to open the common prompt. Yeah. This will be just, yeah, amazing. If it would have helped. By the way, I do open common prompt from day to day because uh, I'm trying to master some yeah easy programming stuff. Um, and yeah, I do work with the common prompt, but I don't think I have the uh, access to um, the access to chess 24 scripts. So. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. Yeah, and uh, there is a good suggestion to restart the browser and internet connection, but I think it is the entire problem for the server. So it's not, it has nothing to do with my uh, internet connection. So I still can read the chat, by the way. So it's something, something wrong actually here on the server. So it feels like uh, many people experience the same at the moment. Yeah, but how the hell can I read the chat then? That is interesting. That is interesting. Okay, I will try to uh, restart the browser. So stay tuned. Uh, I will get back in a, in a minute or two, okay? So sorry for this, but uh, let's try to, to solve it.
No guys, I'm sorry, but it doesn't seem to work. So I tested this also on uh, uh, my smartphone. So in the app, uh, so different ways. So it looks like a problem with the server, but somehow the chat is still live. So, uh, well, player number five says that he studies computer science. So probably only player number five can tell uh, us all uh, why it is possible, but uh, I don't understand. Actually, I uh, restarted the browser, I restarted the connection, so nothing seems to work. Nothing seems to work. I'm sorry for that. So I intended to play uh, two more games, actually. But well, we'll do this next time, okay? We still have a lot of time uh, in the future because um, mm, I'm planning to play chess still and uh, no one is going to fire me from chess 24. So um, at least it looks like right now. So <laughs> we will have a lot of Fridays uh, in the future and I do hope uh, we'll catch up. Thanks a lot for being with me this evening. I do hope that everything will be fixed soon. Uh, and uh, at least the um, broadcast from uh, St. Louis uh, will be accessible. So enjoy the broadcast. Uh, I do hope uh, that uh, Gary will uh, actually play his best today and uh, actually uh, will come up with some nice wins. But even if not, uh, it is still a great event. There are so many uh, great games, uh, unexpected results. Uh, and uh, the coverage is just fantastic. So stay tuned. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye.